Welcome to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting to a global expedition and research boat. This week we're back on our heavy weather stabilizers. If you don't know what they are and how they work, this here is an image of some fold up wing stabilizers that have been mounted to a commercial trawler. And ours are slightly different, they have a bit of a bend in them. So this image here shows our wings as a model. The bend's there so that it links up to the side of the hull and matches the shape perfectly when we're up against wharfs, marinas and that sort of thing. Part of the process of putting our wings on Brewpeg is that we need to find a way of lifting the wings up and down. Now we're pretty sure we're going to be doing hydraulics, so that means we need a decent hydraulic power pack. So the Kubota, which used to be a generator, is getting converted into a diesel hydraulic power pack. So we take the alternator off the back end of the Kubota and we bolt on a hydraulic pump. Today's job is to get rid of the alternator so that we can figure out what bell housing the Kubota has so we can buy the right parts to fit the hydraulic pump. That's awesome. Heavy as. Yeah. We're carrying on with the stabiliser wings today and that means at some point we're going to have to start welding the internal structures onto the skin. This means sandblasting because you've got to get rid of the rust so that you can get a good, really good weld. So here's Dame doing some sieving and getting some of our sandblasting sand ready. <laughs> so Dom is one of our Patreons, he's been a supporter of the boat. You've got green stuff all over your nose. <laughs> Just, <laughs> it's awesome. Dom, <laughs> this is how it happens. So Dom's been a supporter of the boat for a while now and um, yeah, he came up, he's, he's up visiting family so we thought we'd, um, we'd catch up. Dom let us know that he was here. And These are the, um, this is one of two holding tanks. These are temporary holding tanks. These came with the trawler when we first walked on, to, on this trawler. These were at the back, so we thought, oh, they're great, we'll use them. And later on, we're going to build a uh, custom holding tank. So that'll be fiberglass, and we'll fiberglass it into the shape of the engine bay where they will be sitting uh, long term. But this is just temporary, so this is what's going to enable us to go to the Great Barrier Ooh. Reef and be legal <laughs> and not put poo everywhere. So what we're doing is, you can sort of see on the sides here, you've got like quite a bit of just surface rust and staining and whatever where we've had like grinding flecks and garbage has sort of landed on the tank over the years because these have been floating around the boat for five years now. Um, what we're doing is basically just giving them a clean up. So we've got some, some CRC, um, which is awesome stuff. Um, I don't know how popular that is in the States, but a WD-40 might be like the equivalent you might know of. Um, CRC is popular in New Zealand and it's just really great. So we spray a heap of that stuff over it. We've got some 120 grit on the orbital sander over there. And um, yeah, we're just giving it a buzz up and it's coming up really nice. So. Mm, yep, good. Oh, look at that, it's awesome. Oh, look. Yeah, Simple. perfect, that'll do. Just got to be tidy, eh? And you're going to have to, there's a couple of pinholes, we'll just have to go through and weld. Yeah, when the boat went underwater, there's a couple of bits that obviously got attacked by some corrosion, so there's some pinholes somewhere, I can't remember where they are, but yeah, I'll track it down. Fine. So we're back on wings. Trevor and me are figuring out how we're going to do various components. So we're going to, this is wing number two, we're going to start um, putting the leading edge, the trailing edge, and the right angle um, angle iron support in the centre of this thing. Um, Jess and I also figured out how we're going to be doing our bracing so that we can um, put our hydraulic arms um, onto the wings, like how we're going to connect them onto the wings. Originally we were going to use these big stainless plates um, and I never really was satisfied with that because we're going to be dragging a big flat surface sideways through the water. I didn't really like that so um, we pondered a yeah like this. So it basically was going to be sticking up on the wing like that which drives me nuts. So the plan is we're going to reuse those but we're going to put them up on the hull where it doesn't matter about um, hydrodynamics and we're going to modify the wing slightly and we're actually going to sink the hinge into the wing so there'll be very little hinge protruding outside the skin of the wing. plan is to bring both wings up simultaneously in terms of build so this wing here that doesn't have it's only got the two strong backs down the center we need to put the um, the beam in over the side here the right angle 50 mil right angle here 
and the flat bar on the trailing edge on this edge here we also need to do the pipe on the far edge over there so in a few minutes it's hopefully going to look very similar to this one where you've got your trailing edge the 50 mil and then the um the round pipe so a bit to get through today so the goal is is to get this one this up to this level i just want to take you through this the steps that we're going to go through so um once the internal strengthening is on this we've got the different bars that Dane's talked about going on um, then it's all about the skin going on but before we put the skin on we've got to do a continuous weld along these lines here so there's a lot of welding if you look at both of them there's a lot of welding that we've got to get through and then it's uh, fitting and welding on the skins and then of course there's the ends little panels at the ends for aerodynamics you may be wondering are we blasting or how are we dealing with the rust on the inside it's going to be airtight so no no you know there's a limited amount of oxygen once that oxygen is, is used up it's not going to rust but also we're going to put oil in here which will slosh around permanently and and keep from rusting the outside however so if you look over here in the skin we're going to get this blasted we're hoping to, um, Tony and the guys in the yard to do that they've got a really rough garnet for, for blasting for sandblasting we want that because this is going to be, you know, it's going to have a rough life, it's going to be under the water, it's going to be, have a lot of movement, so we want the paint to hold really well. So we're going to use a very good paint, but we want it to hold, so we're going to get them to blast it. So it'll look pretty spick once it's, um, <laughs> once it's done. If we put that, we just did. Oh, of course, it's not going to reach. The next one's up. And and we've got to be with the perpendicular. Yeah. So, <laughs> but as I as we pull back on this, as we pull back on this, it becomes more and more. Uh, Hang on, we've got a bigger bigger clamp. <laughs> how, how far is that? Ten mil. And anything. We've got to bring this out. So the trouble we're having is we've got it aligned at each end but the centre's not right so we've got to basically wedge it out so that and by doing that it does two things. It makes this here, this surface here flat and parallel, uh, sorry at a right angle to this structural beam here which is what we need but it also means that the trailing edge is even all the way down the wing. If we left it it would go in in the centre and then come back out at the hinge end. This is awesome look you can actually see us. Ginormous this thing is standing next to Damien. <laughs> it's working beautiful. Don't know how we do it for my. Oh, my dad's coming up good. They might. I might give you a flapper actually. Yeah, just to get rid of that. So they're going to bugger up your sanding disc. Yeah, they will. They do. We're about to weld our pipe here onto the front of the wing. So to do that, we get a piece of wood and we just clamp it onto the, right at the very front of the wing. You can see that it's curving off. And the reason we do that is because then the pipe sits just down in this little area here and it's perfectly flush with the surface of the steel. So it's an easy way to get a nice fair wing. Look at that. And that's why we do it that way, because you end up with it sitting absolutely perfectly on the skin of the wing. Alignment's not crash hot, is it? No. Maybe we just align it at this end and then push it down to whatever at the other. Happy there? Yeah. <laughs> 
So we've just found a problem with the wings, basically they've been bent wrong. The curve in the 6mm steel here has got too much curve in this sort of area in here and what it's doing is it's making this pipe too high. So when we put the skin on, if you take a straight edge across there, it's hitting halfway up the pipe and it should be hitting almost at the top of the pipe here. The trouble is that's going to screw up the water flow completely on the underside of the wing, which so we can't have, we have to modify it. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can either straighten the wing out, which is incredibly hard to do accurately, and it's also difficult to do because we don't have any of the press or the capability to do that. The other way to do it is to modify the front end so that we don't have as big a diameter pipe. So I'll draw it out and I'll show you what some of the ideas are. We had too much curve on the 6mm steel wing. So if you imagine, it's exaggerated, but that's the wing. That's the six, that's these pieces of 16mm flat over here two of them, then we had uh, a right angle like so, which is this piece just here, and then we've got the 6mm by 100mm flat at the back, and that's the internal structure of the wing. Now we welded a piece of 50mm onto the front like that. The trouble was, you can see because this has got too much curve in it, if you draw a straight line, which is going to be the, the bottom skin of the wing, it meets halfway up that pipe, which is completely the wrong spot for it. What we need to achieve is a nice, even, so if that water was just to hit that, it's going to have to do a big bump like that before it can flow over the wing. It'll, it'll nicely flow over the top, no problem, but the bottom will be awful and you'll end up with turbulent flow all along the bottom and you'll completely ruin the aerofoil effect. So what we needed to do was come up with a better solution for the front. My original idea was to um, basically get the bottom skin and just weld it onto the top skin. So you end up, it's not ideal, but you end up with more of a point at the front as opposed to a round. Rounds are better, they're way more aerodynamic, but if it was a choice between a point like that and a bad flow like that, I'd choose the point every other day. Jess came up with a really good idea. If we could get some pipe that would reduce the diameter enough that we could join it to a round, but still stay within the confines of, of the limitations of having too much bend in the top, we can do it. So we did a bit of phoning around, we found some 32 mil um, pipe, sorry no it was a 29mm pipe actually and by doing that we can go back to the original idea of having the wing having the round bar and then having a nice smooth section on the bottom and our 100mm sections and then our 50mm right angle at the back it's kind of an exaggerated it's a hugely curve, exaggerated curve but yeah. you get the idea at the it's front flat, pretty much. this is, yeah this is virtually flat but we're trying to clean up that front if we if we didn't we're going to end up with bad flow if we don't put the pipe in, we're going to end up with a non-ideal flow. And with Jess's idea of the 29mm pipe, we end up with a really lovely flow where the water comes along and then splits, splits quite evenly like that as it goes up and over the wing. So um, you think it'll work, eh? Yeah, I think it'll work quite well. What does that actually do? Sorry? This less at the front what yep. does that actually do in terms of like as in like a smaller a smaller pipe yeah so it, it, it depends on, it depends on the speed you, your wing is going through either like whatever the fluid is whether it's water or air depends on the um you can have more curve on on the steel work you can have more curve on the top or the bottom if you've got a slower moving wing um you can have more round on a slower moving wing so if it's a real a jet will have a really fine taper on the on the wing Whereas a slow plane, like a glider or something like that, will have a much, much more curve going on in the wing and a blunter front edge. And what does that make it do? Why, why do they? Sorry, I'm getting bitten by midges. <laughs> um, it's, it's all about, it's the difference between laminar and turbulent um, flow, whether it's in water or air. So, slow, like, you, you want laminar flow, which is where the water nicely stays with the wing the whole way over. Turbulent is where it does that and starts to curl and whatever. So you're trying to basically get the maximum amount of lift without creating turbulence and without creating excess drag. If you have it very sharp, you're more likely to get um, turbulent flow, which is what you don't want. If you have a nice blunt edge that's the correct diameter for the speed that you're going at, you're more likely to get a laminar flow. So I just got back from town, and the guys are obviously draining out the um, IBC, so this is the one that we had the veg oil in. It was our main one, hence there's so much crap all over it. We need to give it a good scrub and clean before we give it back to the marina. But this is the veg oil. It's obviously turned a bit feral, um, but yeah, that's what it's like when it's gross, hot, and <laughs> it's not as rancid, bad as we thought, though. isn't it? No, no, the tank inside is actually really good. Oh, the tank, yeah, yeah, it stays. Mm. The tank stays clean inside, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's 
Yeah. Outside is the duty bed. Yeah, yeah. Need a water bath. I got some reinforcing for for the wings too. Reinforcing. Yeah. I'm gonna put some things in there. Oh, I see, Richard. Yeah. It was an afterthought, but I thought it would work. Well, I know what you mean. A lot of people wouldn't, but I know. No. Because it's not heavy enough. Nah. <laughs> they're a wee bit lightweight. <laughs> it's really lovely having this help. There's a, there's a bunch of jobs like this which are just horrible crappy jobs but we have to get to them because we have to empty the boat of all of the stuff underneath so that we can launch. <laughs> yeah. Jess text me, uh, Jess text me a bucket of oil, a video of a bucket of oil and then just with a question mark lunch. <laughs> So Trev's just working on the angle line and basically what this angle line needs to, the way that we need to know if it's going to fit, if you take a line across the top of that angle line it should meet that structural member and the flat bar at the back of the wing. So there we go. So we move the angle line back and forth to, in order to line it up with the um, that ruler there. So go to the back of the wing a bit and you'll pretty much bang on. And the reason we do that is because then we can just cut a slot on the skin and just um, uh, slot weld it onto that bar. Yeah. So one of the things that we need to do is reinforce the two main structural members. We need to make sure they're not going to flop around. Now the skin itself is going to provide a reasonable amount of strength because it's still going to be double continuous welded so it's going to be pretty stiff. But I want to be extra sure so I went. When I went into town I grabbed some extra steel. I got some 100 by 16 mil flat bar. So 16 mil wide, 100 mil tall. I'm going to put that vertically um, where the wing is going to bolt together to the arm. I'm going to put that in there as a bit of a brace. We're going to make some stainless cheeks that bolt in there that do the pivot for the wing to arm joint. All right, ready? Like that one, right? Yeah. Go and get this. Okay, three, two, one, boys. Lunch is in T minus five. So the gas that we're using today is this guy here. So it's 75% argon, 10 to 20% CO2 and 5% oxygen. It's more suited to mild steel. Um, the one that we have been using for a while is this guy here. Uh, it is, um, where are we? 95% argon and 5% oxygen. The reason I use that one there is it's much more suited to be able to just swap between mild and stainless, like thin mild and stainless frequently. You have to change the gas, whereas this one here you can't do um, stainless with it because of the CO2, but it's perfect for um, mild steel welding. Where do you live? Where are you from? Uh, just across the road. Yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. In the yacht? <laughs> <laughs> where are you, where are you from originally? It's such an Australian answer. Too, <laughs> where are you originally from? You are Australian? Yes, I'm Australian. From on down south of the border. Down Mexico way. Mexico way, right. Yeah. <laughs> Long way south of the border. <laughs> so New South Wales then? Victoria. Victoria, oh. That's a long way south. That's right, that's right. And whereabouts are you from? Kayama, Illawarra. So, 100 k's south of Sydney. Right. Why, what, what, what is it about Brinkley that interests you? Well, it's a long answer really because but the short part <laughs> is... We got time? <laughs> <laughs> we do, definitely. <laughs> uh, I came up here 15 months ago after having a stroke mm. and I decided to buy a yacht. I knew no one up here so I decided to do something I'd never done before and um, had no money to do anyway, but so I bought a yacht, did it up, and in my spare time I watched this YouTube and someone made mention of the fact that Rupeg was over here and they're doing it, and they, so I had a look. Damon caught me on the lawn over the, <laughs> the other side That's there. That's right. So here I am with doesn't sound like Damien I, at all. And I'm here. <laughs> 
it's quite cool that it's just over the fence. Hey? It it's is. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's been, it's been very, very good for me. Yeah. And Trevor's like here all the time you know just not, and he has this amazing timing thing it's like we'll be about to lift something and i shouldn't be lifting it and i'm going oh, i can do it and then Trevor will just wander over oh do you need a hand it's, how did you know you know it's, it's, and it's not just once or twice it's all the time it's so brilliant so you what's about what is it about Rupee that it's on the internet and yes i think i found you from sv seeker one time um but i have family in Bundaberg or Childers, so it's sort of having you sort of the connection to this sort of area because I used to come here as a kid mm. and it's the sort of bit sort of seeing what you guys are doing it's sort of pretty incredible. Neat, so. neat. Well thanks for your help help today we're, we're tackling some um, icky jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were doing too good a job so I can't, can't let you get away with that. And um, why Brewpeg for me? Big, strong trawler, <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> so good fun. Uh, I'm from Nelson, New Zealand, so top end of the South Island, New Zealand. It certainly sounds like that accent. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And what is it about brew pig? I really like the engineering. Um, <laughs> I like the, uh, the the promise of brew pig, you know, going to some pretty ridiculously remote places. Um, she's a lovely, big, tough old girl. and. I love the fact that she's strong enough to handle pretty much anything that we can ever throw at her. She's tough old girl, Trevor! So that's going in. <laughs> so these pipes are the 50mm pipes that were on the front of the wings. You can see they've been cut off now. Trev's cut them all off. And what we're going to do to solve our challenge, heavy wall, um, small diameter pipe, and that's going to become the leading edge. And that hopefully we'll solve our challenge. Aha, it has, look at this. So Trev's just holding it flat across those two um, longitudinals and you can see there's a gap by his hand there which is exactly what we need because that means the bottom of the wing's gonna bend up to meet that pipe. Yep. So same as before, we're basically clamping the wood on the front edge there so that we can get the pipe, if you look down here, you can see the pipe perfectly lines up with the skin on the wing itself. Maybe if I show you at the very end you'll see it easier. You can sort of see that there. The pipe is basically bang on the wing so by the time we fear that in, it's going to be pretty awesome and so on for water flow. So that's why we're doing it the way we're doing it. We also need to uh, focus on this edge here and trim the pipes so that they can weld together um, pretty nice. Have a maybe a three mil gap between them, we can fill that up with weld. Eyes. See there's quite a gap, and then when he puts the clamp on, he basically pulls it right down. So we'll fill that up with weld now. Alright, welding. Just cut that one. Trying to work out why it just wouldn't weld. It was like I had no earth. Couldn't understand. This is what happens when a welding earth spontaneously disconnects. So they're coming up pretty good. I'm really happy with that. There you go. Look at that. Oh, no. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Giving a <No>. nosy. <laughs> the conversation over here sounds sparkling. <laughs> 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 So this is why we sandblast. So you can see, even though it's wet, right up in that join there, you've got a really clear, nice, lovely piece of white metal. Didn't probably, oh, I clearly haven't blasted enough there, but long story. You can sort of see 
most of them are pretty spot on so that gives us a way better penetration when we're welding because we're not having to burn through all of that rust and garbage that's on there we get a much better um, join these are the welds that were done without having to do any blasting or anything so they're still like these were the tacks but they're still good enough um, they'll certainly do for what we were trying to do at the time but now we'll go through and we'll yeah fill that up with some pretty solid welds is it gonna rain we are supposed to get lots of rain and lots of wind and we haven't got anything so It's a cracker morning out in the boat so we're supposed to be getting um, 30 knots or something today I think and they've been predicting a bucket load of rain over the last few days but I don't know if that'll show up or not maybe it will anyway it's pretty early we've come down so that we can start welding before the wind really gets up and then wow look at the mozzies I don't know if you can see that on the camera but conservatively there's 50 60,000 mozzies on that wing so this morning while the wind's pretty low it's about 10 knots at the moment um, we'll get this uh, as much of this um, wing welded up as we can Look at that. That's, that's Jess's first flux core weld. Not bad, it's coming up beautiful. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Mm. We've got a big long run to welding to do, so she's out here this morning first thing. She's definitely a morning person. But um, we've got I guess, 25 metres of welding per wing to do. So Jess is just belting out some, some runs. While Jess is getting the wings welded up, I'm going to be building a wooden template. So I've got this hole here, well this future hole, is the same diameter as the um, pins that we're using to hold the wings on. So I'm going to be basically building wooden templates so that we can figure out on the side of the boat up here, it allows us to figure out exactly what angles and lengths and things like that we need for the arms. So. Um, we've designed them in CAD, we're pretty sure we know what we're doing, but we want to just double check with a full size mock-up. Um, I'm just going to watch your gas when you're doing it. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, I just bumped the gas up slightly. Uh, there's a setting on here called 2T4T. Yeah. I'll show you. It basically means you don't have to hold the trigger down. Oh, that's you, you press the trigger once and it stays on until you press it again and it turns off. It's great for these long runs.
That's awesome, look at that. Yeah. It's not bad, eh? No, they're great. That's a good, good strong run. So, welding's off. Down there is about two inches of water, solid, and then about probably a good inch right the way across the yard. Tried to make a little barrier over there with a tank, pushing it into the drain, um, so I can try and avoid some of the water going into the workshop, because we've got, at the moment, down in the workshop, there's probably a good inch and a half of water right across the whole floor, so we've had to sort of shift everything, but yeah, that's outside work done for the moment. So even with the rain, the work can't stop, so Dame and Don got on with installing the shroud for the exhaust from the engine bay, but more about that next week. And what's Damien's cooking like? It's almost like? a unique food. Uh, Acceptable. Acceptable. Yeah, uh, you, you're very good when you, you have the time to do it. And someone's telling you everything. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got alarms for everything. Got timer on the wall. And I've got like peas, two minutes, beans, da da da. Broccoli yeah, yeah. or something. Project manager again. Yeah, so everything has a minute rating on the wall. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah, it's yeah, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So what's the longest one? Start with that one. Alright, cool. And then reverse engineer dinner. It's yeah, the only way I can make it. Yeah. Well, we should get another one. We have had a conversation about perhaps it's time for a new lens. A new helmet, you new, know, how many helmet. people comment on that? Yeah. <laughs> you can tell when Damien's about to weld. Oh, he's finished. Yeah. And he's pleased. Like, when you're pleased, it's like, <laughs> you do it fast. I just thought you added that in post. <laughs> So one of the things we have to figure out is um, how do we do our arms for the wings. We're going to be doing hydraulic uh, arms that go up and down and they work a bit like an excavator. And let me show you where me and Trevor are at the moment. Behind Brewpeg there's an industrial site that's got a whole bunch of equipment, conveyors and all sorts of stuff. And behind here is a 25-30 tonne excavator. Now what we're looking at specifically is the top of the arm. So if I come back here You've got this arm here, and then you've got your main, whatever the other bit's called there. Left arm, right arm, we'll call it. This pivot right here is what we're trying to figure out. So the ratio between the distance of that pivot and that pivot there, we'll call that a metre. And then from there down to the pivot that's in here somewhere, it looks to be about three metres. So we're calling it a three to one ratio up here. So for every metre of arm we have on ours, we have to have um, 300 millimetres sticking up so that we can arrangement here so we're going to be putting a hydraulic ram in essentially the same sort of layout. You need a ah, of energy to lift your wing if you've got six ton limit on your ram yeah you've got to build that into your take that into account with your pivot ratio. Yeah right that makes sense. So the ram that we're going to be using is it's an off-the-shelf part it's a two and a half inch cylinder um, and you can get variable lengths of the, the stroke is variable so you can just choose whatever one you want. The safe working load of the ram that we're um, looking at using is 6.6 .6 ton um, so uh, obviously maximum working is going to be higher than that but safe is yeah call it six and a half ton so that's theoretically what we're building our, our um, arms, wings and rams uh, all around is that 6.6 .6 number. We found a little digger that we can get up close so we can actually get some proper measurements. So if we come back you can basically see so this arm has a bend in it that's kind of irrelevant for us we're looking at it from say there down so imagine that connected to the deck up here on brew peg it's going to stick out into mid-air have its little pivot type arrangement with a hydraulic ram on top and then it's going to come down to the wings here so that's the idea is to duplicate that. The next step in these wings, Jess and I have got a lot of double continuous welding to do. So each side of each beam in those wings needs to be welded. There's about 25 or 30 metres in total um, to be welded. So it'll be a lot of hours spent on the MIG to get those sorted. In the background you can see the wooden mock-ups uh, for the arms. Trevor and I have been working on the geometry of those in, with some plywood mock-ups and we're going to move to a, a temporary set of steel arms to just figure out the, um, the final arm design. I want to say thanks to Dominic, a Patreon of ours. He came up for the weekend and gave us an enormous amount of help. We had some IT challenges that we had to solve on the boat. We also had a heap of engineering to do and he got stuck in on all of it so it was really awesome to have his help and it was just a, it was a great fun time all around so I just um, yeah really wanted to say thanks. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill I'd die and now it starts to rain, so let's enjoy it.